Welcome to the road of life. This, this uh, series of messages that I teach on Monday nights is strictly for those that struggle. You know what? Everybody has a wrestling match every now and then. It's, it's a tough thing out there. We're going through this uh, situation, uh, this coronavirus going around. Uh, people just don't know what to do. It's not an easy thing to uh, know what to do in this hour. I'd like to start with a scripture in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, without any kind of crisis... Uh, in your life. In other words, let me just put it this way. Without going through crisis, there can be no opportunity to make progress. It's vitally important and imperative to have a clear break from your past. I'm talking about getting clean with your past. That means forgiving people. That means Love those that are unlovable. That's how God expects us to do. We as Christians have to do that. Because I don't know about you. I don't want to have the struggles in life. And struggles uh, and, and living halfway for God. And, and not forgiving people. And holding grudges. Because these are definitely... Uh, will lead to a good testimony when you overcome. <clears throat> now, this is already entering into the gate. Uh, really, I'm going to talk about the way tonight. The way, okay? We've talked about entering into the gate. We've gone beyond the gate. But there's something after you enter into the kingdom. Otherwise, there can never be any spiritual advancement if you don't go through the gate, one of the false current uh, trends that is making the rounds in churches and church growth today, the theory is that we must constantly change the church. Uh, sir, ma'am, the church should never change. Why? So it can relate to our change in society? No. If we change with society, we are no longer the church. Society still needs to change because God expects society to change. God expects me to change. I don't come in here dragging all my goods that I call good, coming to God and, and allowing those things to be in my walk with God. It just don't work that way. Because the problem here is only escalates the gluttony of seeker service or user-friendly congregations. Never mind that our society is obsessed with self-polluted immorality repulsed by their commitments and uh, smug in its own new tolerance mode. One of the tolerances, everything except biblical absolutes that's the way tolerance is we can tolerate this we can tolerate that but when it comes down to biblical principles this old world system does not like to tolerate bible because they know when you get into the bible things begin to happen people begin to change you're not the same person you used to be and uh, that's a good thing why? Because there's power in the Word of God. The Word of God can stand alone. I promise you, when you get the Word, you hide thy Word in your heart, the Bible says that you sin not against Him. The fact is, this is where America is today. If you tolerate it long enough, you will join it. And I, I've preached a message on that. That's what tolerance is all about. I, I've met people that uh, stood on their ground, didn't believe it, 
And all of a sudden, one day they wake up and say, you know, it's okay. It's okay for them. I, I don't do those things, but it's okay if they do it. Well, <clears throat> I'm afraid if we uh, buy into those, those things like tolerate it, uh, I'm afraid that much of the growth that we have seen recently in religious sect circles has been more infections and swellings more than growth in building people. Why? Because of tolerance. We tolerate people that come in. We don't expect them to change. Church, I'm going to tell you something. God expects us to change. It takes time. I understand that. But listen to me. And I, I, I believe in process. I believe in mercy. In fact, uh, I, I'd rather say that I can, I can tolerate people that come in and they, they, they come in and they don't have it together. And I do understand that. When you come to God and you make a commitment to God, you're the old person that comes in. And sometimes it takes a, the old to become new for a while. It just takes time. You got to get it in your spirit. If it stays in the mind and it stays in your mindsets, uh, the old way, the old habits, the old way to do it, then I can understand you not changing. But you see, the gospel always expects man to change. We have to line up to his statues. We have to line up with his goings and his sayings because it's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with changing with God. You know, now, I would like to say this. Are ministries and movements built on human alterations rather than God biblical instructions? Just a good question, isn't it? Is ministries want to go that way? What kind of ministry would we have if we just built it on, I can do this and I can do that? Eh, you know, it's a little compromised, but I think it's going to be okay. Is it, is it really going to be okay to, comp to compromise godly principles? I don't think so. Now, uh, I, I, I don't believe in, in cleaning people up when they get in the church. Just, you know, that's God's job. I, it really is. It's not my job. God is the one that changes molds and shapes, and I'm so glad he does because... I've never been a good, I've never been good at that. I think that when people come into our churches, we need to give them time and space. And I am convinced that the Word of God, when it's preached and taught behind that pulpit, I am convinced that God will change hearts. That is His job. That's not my job. My job is to get in the Word of God as a minister of the gospel and preach the Word of God without compromise you know <clears throat> i am all about change change of methods that allows us to preach more effectively methods not message but the bible expressly forbids us to change its message if we do so we will have more of a mess than we will a message I'm going to repeat that. If I change the gospel message to you, first of all, I have betrayed you because it's impossible for you to change if you don't hear the sound. I'm talking about a sound, the, the solid sound. I'm talking about the message of Jesus Christ. If I don't give it to you in truth, and I compromise the principles of God, then guess what? You're going to become a mess more than a message. Uh, among many, among many, there's truths which we have come to believe, truth that we've become to believe there. There is none higher than our own being, being in Christ. Now, can I say that again? There's not a better belief than higher than being in Christ. Now, being in Christ means putting on Christ. 
That means when I put him on, I represent him well. I represent him without compromise. I, I represent him because I, I, I must have a higher standard when I put on Christ. Now, again, please, I will never try to change human beings. I just preach the word and the word is what changes people. It transforms more than just reform. I am, I'm not just saying I'm against reform or reformation, but reformation only hits the mind. It'll never hit the heart. Transformation, I've seen people healed of cancer. I've seen people healed of all kinds of diseases. I've seen God heal the mind that couldn't think straight. Uh, uh, I've, I've seen God heal so many things in people's lives. Nothing is higher than this position of God. Now, nothing can be higher than the position that forgiveness and remission of sins is preached beginning at Jerusalem. And I will say it again. Forgiveness and remission of sins is preached beginning at Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. That You can find that in uh, Luke, the 24th chapter. Now, <clears throat> when we say forgiveness and remission of sins in Christ, that means, first of all, I am justified in the Spirit when I come to God. Just if I had never sinned. Then on the journey, okay, I am sanctified. Sanctification on the journey. Let me just talk about that. In my walk, I am learning of Him. And in learning of Him, as the preacher preaches, as I read the Word of God, as I go to Sunday school classes, as I hear the Word in, in and out, the Word of God taught and preached, then I can be sanctified on the journey. Then, toward the end of my days, waiting for that glorious day of redemption. And Jesus Christ, He will redeem us one day. And He will keep us. He will keep us out of, uh, He will keep us in His hands. And I am so glad. Now, let me say this too. It's all in Jesus Christ. It's all in Him. It's all in trusting Him. For the fullness of the Godhead is in Him. You don't have to have anything else but Him. All spiritual blessings, everything that I teach and I preach is all in Him. Everything, everything. The most important question for us today then is this how can we be in Christ well being in Christ is such a simple phrase its truth is exceedingly vast it is so all encompassed that is almost beyond measured God hath blessed us with Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places of Christ. That's found in Ephesians 1, 3. I'm talking about all of the blessings are in Him. All spiritual blessings are eternal. They exist before we did. You know, when we became Christ's child... When we became born of water and of spirit. And by the way, the Bible says no man can enter in without being born of water and of spirit. That means he makes a deposit in our spiritual, our spiritual bank account. Isn't it good that God has a way to deposit things in our spirit? I'll never forget my pastor told me one time, he said, you know, I would come to him and I'd say, oh, I'm having this struggle. I'm having this going on in my life. I was young, young lad, kind of old saying he is wet behind the ears. 
I was just a freshly born again person. Didn't know a whole lot. But I'll never forget him telling me something. And it really, it really, really changed my whole perspective about living for God. I came to him wanting an answer from him. And I didn't get the answer that I expected from him. But he did say this. He said, son, the answer is in you. The answer is in you. Why did he tell me that? That was not what I was looking for. But he told me that because he wanted me to dig for the answer already in me. You see, as the fullness of the Godhead bodily is within Jesus Christ, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're filled with his spirit, you are full of God. Now, when you get full of God, there is no room for anything else. You know, too many times, too many times we look everywhere. We look on the outside looking for God. We look for God to come out of heaven. Let me tell you something. When you get born again of the war and the spirit and you're his and you've got this Holy Ghost inside of you and it is so relevant and it's powerful. It's a powerful tool. When it's inside of you, you don't have to search anywhere else outside of inside the answer. The answer's in you. Now, I do understand it's hard to operate on knowledge that you don't have. Now, there is some things that don't come to me because of lack of knowledge. I understand that. But I'm talking about if you already, there's been that answer already deposited in you and you already feel it. Oh, my God. Let me say something right here. There is always a gnawing inside of God speaking to me inside me. And listen, listen to me. That Holy Spirit inside of you, it does not lie. It is the best friend that you'll ever have inside. Everything you need to live for is already in you. Everything that God has given you is already in you by His Spirit. Natural blessings are always temporal. I understand that. Just, you know. But spiritual blessings is for everlasting. When God plants a seed spiritually inside of you, that seed is going to live forever and it will not die. You are the only person that can kill God inside of you. You're the only thing that stands between you and God. Because you, in between your two ears, you make decisions every day. What you say and what you do must come joining together. That's why God never goes into emergency mode. He has already done everything he needs to do to deliver you. You are now waiting on your deliverance until God chooses to give it to you. And guess what? He's already given it to you if you're born again. Now, I will say this. If you have not come to God, these things are exempt from you. Because God does not know you. You need to get to the place where you know him. And then you can have everything at your disposal. God that lives inside of man. There is nothing greater than the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit of God living inside of you. Good thing that God lives. I am so glad that he lives there. And I'm glad that he sent down his spirit to live among men. Live among you. Let me tell you something. They waited 10 days. 10 days in an upper room. I can imagine the smells. I can imagine the stench for 10 days. I don't know how hot it was. I don't even know what kind of temperature it was. You know, can you imagine being closed in? We think that we are closed in today because of this co coronavirus. Wow. 10 days. Quarantine. Huh. Wow. 10 days. You know? 
Now, 10 days in the upper room, they got a hold of something. And not only got a hold of something, they possessed it. Now, they waited then. Guess what? You don't have to wait. Do you know that you can be in your room and you can just cry out to God right now in your bedroom all alone and raise your hands and be to weep and just begin to weep before God and just weep and cry and God can fill you with His Spirit right there in your living room, right there in your bedroom. You don't have to wait to come to church to get the Holy Ghost like I'm talking about. I have got to tell you that when God filled me with the Holy Ghost, He delivered me from drugs. He delivered me from so many things, so many issues, anger, and all of this stuff that was inside of me. But God had to get inside of me. It was not a reformation. It was a transformation. And it was real. So, let me say this. Possess it. It's the best thing you could ever have. When all else falls and fails, follow directions, the Word of God. In Acts, the second chapter, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. It appeared unto them clothed in tongues as a fire set upon each one of them, and they were all, not one, not two, not just some sect, not some religious group, not they were left out, but God loved me more than them. No, 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 no. God didn't love me any more than he did you. You can be filled with the Spirit right there in your home. It does not matter what anybody else says. Can you imagine a man having a million? I'm going to go, I'm going to turn this thing around a little bit. Can you imagine a man having a million dollar check? Million dollar, dollar check written down. I'm talking about signed, sealed, and delivered to you. Check. Yeah, the funds are in. The, man, the funds are there. I mean, all you have to do is cash the check. But can you imagine a man having that check? So, oh, I just don't, I can't cash this. I don't believe it's in the bank. I, I just don't believe that that man has the money. And the man says, it's in the bank. All you have to do is cash the check. Let me tell you something. Can you imagine a man having a million dollar check in his, right there in his hand? Okay? Writing that check to you. The, avail the funds are available. The funds are in the bank. But the reason why we don't get it is because we doubt it. We don't believe that God is the God that he says he is. We don't sometimes, we allow doubt and confusion and all of this stuff getting inside that stands between me and God and we just don't know. We are so engulfed in unbelief. We believe that it can do I believe we believe that it can do a lot of good for someone else. That person over there, we believe that God can do it for him, but but what about me? We don't believe sometimes. If you're not going to cash the check, guess what? You could be wealthy you could have everything at your disposal if you just go cash the check. You don't even realize that you're wealthy. But you are. But you're not wealthy if you can't cash the check or won't cash the check. You know, since the blessings are all in Him and they're so abundant, why is it that many who seem, seemingly believe do not obtain these blessings. The reason is because they are ignorant of two aspects of faith. They must act upon, they must act upon faith as well as have a good attitude toward faith. So many may have believed and seemingly have exhibit the attitude of faith, but yet they lack the attitude, the act of action toward faith. You can have the attitude, but you, you're not acting on faith. They have not crossed the threshold of faith at one time and with a singleness of mind believing God's facts. Now, 
They mistake the attitude of faith for faith itself. If they pass through the crisis of faith, they shall experience many blessings in Christ, therefore maintaining the attitude of faith. This does not mean that they obtain everything on the day they pass through the gate. You will have days of trauma. You'll have days of struggles. You'll have days of great success. You'll have days where you're on the mountaintop and you feel like you're going to be on the mountaintop for eternity. And you'll be so joyful. God's doing great things. But let me just say this. What about the day that you're in the valley? Can you make all sense of all of this when, the, when you're in the valley? In a sense, they do possess all. Nevertheless, they have not yet experienced all. That's what's good about the journey. Getting clean with God. Enjoying the journey that you're on. Not allowing anything to stand between you and God. You and your maker. Now, <clears throat> our lives are similar. It's similar like entering into a garden. Within all is before our eyes. But we have to walk through the garden to experience everything in it. You know, we're growing a garden this year. And my wife is wanting to go a straw bale garden. Kind of like hay. You plant gardens inside of a hay bale. Well, the hay bale and the garden, the uh, straw bale are pretty well the same, except the straw bale is a little bit clean, and you don't get all this other stuff that comes up with it. You know, what we're doing is we're, we're building a foundation in our garden. We, we don't want to have to worry with all the weeds coming up. We would rather start with a good foundation. Listen to me. This is a good fact. If you will start with a good foundation and get clean, just like we are getting these straw bales instead of hay bales. You see, hay bales come from a field. And they just, they're, they're uh, baled up and anything can be, grass burrs, all kinds of stuff can be in that hay bale. And uh, you water it and water it and fertilize it. And you may be shocked of what will come up in that hay bale. Now, straw bale is nothing but straw. I went there the other day to pick up some straw bale and I asked them what the difference was. Well, <laughs> sir, straw bale is not hay. It's straw. You, it's just straw. I said, what's the difference? He said, well, horses eat one and they don't eat the other. It's just straw. That's what he said. So straw, when you plant in that straw it breaks down and and everything where you can plant great things and things come up and and guess what you can enjoy the fruitage of good fruit you know i'm 66 years old i have went through a lot of stuff over the years i've went through anger i went through drugs i went through so much stuff man i didn't respect adults i didn't i didn't want nobody telling me what to do I'll never forget, I'm going to tell you something real funny, I'm telling off on myself. I'll never forget the time when I was going through a discipleship class, or really it was a new converts class. My pastor's wife told me, she says, Brother Grady, you're going to stay in my class one more year. I put my hands on my hips and something fired up inside of me. And I'm not saying it was the Spirit of God. It was that old man that tried to live. It was part of me that was not crucified. It was part of me that still wanted to live that was not right. And I says, what do you mean another year in a convert's class? I've went through a whole year. He says, Brother Grady, until you learn how to treat your wife, you're going to stay in here another year. Do you hear me, Brother Grady? And so I won the battle. I won the battle, and the battle was this. I submitted to her call. 
Was it hard to submit to her call? Absolutely. I wanted to, I really wanted to tell her, tell her a few things. But you know what? I learned a lesson, a great lesson of submission. And I'm so glad I could have quit. I could have quit the church. I could have left the church mad, angry, upset, you know, and lost my relationship with God. But I am so glad today that I stuck with it. And let me say this to you, sir or ma'am. You may be out there on the outside looking in. You may have a lot of issues. And there's going to be times if you come to this church, I'm going to tell you some things that you're not going to like. But if you will just chew on it, carry it home and pray over it and say, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like green beans. I don't like green beans. I'll never forget my, my mother in my, in my youthful years. In my, I was just a kid. She gave me wheat germ. Some of you older folks might not, or younger folks may not know what I'm talking about. Wheat germ is something crazy. I don't know. Cook it in a little jar, heat it up, you know, a little old, little bitty, uh, I don't know, a little cup. I don't know what all she put in that wheat germ. She says, son, I want you to eat this. I said, eat it. My God, it looks like popcorn before it's popped. I don't want it. She said, son, eat it because it's good for you. And guess what? I hate it. I don't know whether it's good for me or not, but I did. I, I was obedient to my mother, and, and you know. And so I learned just to be obey, just obey. And no, you know, and then, and, oh, my God, I'll never forget prunes. I'm not talking about prunes that you buy fresh. I'm talking about these dried-up prunes that when they get them out of, the, out of the jar or wherever they come from, and they're just... Uh, yucky and they're, they look rotted to me and she'd put that prune out there I, I couldn't believe my mother did this to me <laughs> she did son eat it it's good for you <laughs> I didn't want to eat that prune I go to the store at H-E-B or something I grab this prune it looks like a plum it's fresh I can handle that but what she gave me in that jar that bowl that plate when I was a kid, it didn't look good. It didn't look like that kind that you buy off the shelf. But it was good for me. Listen. You may possess all that you want to claim in your life. But first of all, you've got to go through the gate. And then you go through the way. Father, I come before the throne of grace. As I taught this message tonight. Get a hold of the hearts out there that need this gospel. This is something, Lord, that's going to live forever. It'll never die. And you that are on the airways out there, you need to hear this gospel. Because once you do and once you have bought in, it's going to be the best journey that you'll ever have. God, I ask you to bless the people. God, I rebuke the spirit of the enemy in their homes that's trying to disrupt and tear apart. I come against divorce. Father, I come against every spirit. You that are in Cleveland, Texas tonight that are listening to this. I have nieces and nephews, Bubba, Donna Kay, your family members. God, I pray over them. It was so good to talk with them. But guess what? God has your number. The Lord's going to do great things. You that are on the outside looking in, you're not a part of POB, but you want to be a part of a church. You want to be a part of this, of, this, of this message that I'm speaking today. God, I love, I love you. And I love them that are listening those even beyond our church, those that are in our church, God, to work. Father, Lord, this coronavirus that is out there is not going to get us. We are going to walk with you in this. And God, I praise you. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. God bless every one of you. Amen.